Hey, Matt with Mage here, and this is our weekly tips and tricks series. It's a series where I talk about how you can make the most of your data pipelines in Mage. Um, sometimes I talk about new features, other times I talk about things that have been around for a while. And today I'm talking about one of those things, something that's been around for a while, um, but that you shouldn't sleep on because it's really pretty cool. Um, and that is backfills using Mage. Um, so I have a pipeline here. It's a uh, uh, load some weather data. I'll pull up the, the tree view here so we can get a good look. Um, so it just loads some weather data from an API. Uh, we're going to extract, transform, uh, and load our data to Google Cloud Storage. And I think the key for this data is that it, it operates um, using an execution date that's defined uh, as the, uh, in our keyword arguments, this is actually a major default uh, runtime variable. So anytime you run a pipeline, you can drop this code in, um, and it'll pull the date of execution from your pipeline. That is the date that the pipeline's being run. Um, and so I wouldn't worry too much about this. I'm just using the Open Meteo API to get some weather data for um, actually Santa Cruz, uh, California. Um, but I think the important thing is that running this uh, is going to return a data frame, and these dates are just in uh, Unix time. Um, but with the weather data for the last eight days, um, the most recent two don't have any data, so we drop those those rows. Um, and so you could imagine having a job that runs every day and maybe pulls in um, data from the execution date with the backwards eight days, like you know, look back, uh, transforms it here. We're gonna we drop the the, the rows with NA columns um, and then writes it to uh, Google Cloud Storage um, partitioned by that date column. So when I run this, we're gonna get files in our Google Cloud Storage folder that correspond, each file is going to be like 2024 slash 01 slash 24. So year, month, date. Um, and in data engineering, we always want to be able to rerun pipelines. If we're, we lose data, rerun pipelines if we want to add data. Um, or if just like our systems fail, maybe this run fails for a day and we miss a day of data um, or like a week of data, right? And so that's where the concept of backfills come in. And so a mage backfill is just going to run this pipeline for multiple days. Um, and this is something that usually requires like a custom script or uh, some bespoke, uh, you know, project. Oh, hey, I need to write a backfill script to fix this thing that broke. Um, and so mage brings that out of the box, right? If, if one of your airflow jobs broke, you might have to figure out how to backflow, uh, backfill, and that can be pretty complex. So if I go to... Uh, our tab here, I can pull up the backfills section. Um, and you can see I've actually already defined a few, but we'll, we'll create a new one. So um, this is a, we have date time window backfills. And what that means is that we will, for each run, Mage is going to change the execution date of the run. And because our pipeline, our API calls are dependent on that execution date, um, we can actually simulate uh, these runs uh, for maybe missing data or lost data. So say we wanted to backfill December 1st, 2023 um, to January 1st, 2024. Since this is fetching, I, I define this pipeline to fetch eight days of data at a time, we would really only need to sp space data out um, between one week. So what this is going to do, I want to actually run this, and you can see we can even define different runtime variables to override for this backfill. But what this is going to do is generate one, two, three, four, five runs um, with those different uh, those different execution dates. Um, and so you can see, because uh, we specified this date range, we'll run it for December 1st, 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th. So what that means, if we go back to our pipeline and take a look at what's going on, we're going to pull this data from an API. We're saying, hey, I want the execution date um, and then I want an eight day look back. This date range variable is uh, eight days. Um, and so when we make this call, we're getting data between those two days. And so for this backfill, um, it's gonna make five API calls, uh, and then it's going to take those that data, transform it, and write it to GCS. And what that means is that I don't need to worry if, if that data disappears, if we want a new, uh, a new column from the API, if the API added data that wasn't previously available, I don't need to worry about writing some complex script and then wondering if I get duplicate data or not. I just run a backfill one time, and voila, I have all the data that I need historically, um, you know, I don't have to worry about that complex setup. And so this is a trivialized example, you know, 
theoretically I could just run this uh, for every day. You know, I just bump the start date back or, or yeah, bump the start date back a year or whatever. But in a lot of cases, that's not how APIs work or that's not how systems work. And it's important to have that backfill mechanism so that you can run uh, an item potent pipeline um, and not have to worry about what's going on with your data. So I'm Matt with Mage. This is how you can backfill your parameterized pipelines um, using the Mage backfill feature. Uh, until next time, hope you uh, have a good one. Peace.